Hello and welcome to the OutSystems YouTube channel. My name is Logan Bray and I'm a developer advocate here at OutSystems. And today we're gonna to be talking about REST APIs, specifically integrating third-party REST APIs into your O11 projects. As a newer seasoned developer, you will likely be tasked with integrating a third-party REST API at some point in your OutSystems journey. And I want to show you just how easy it is to do it. While most REST API tutorials usually involve like a weather API or a movie API, I've decided to do something a little bit different and integrate my O11 project with a Poke API to make my own mini version of a Pokedex. This project originated as a proof of concept for a larger project, but if you'd like to learn more about that or follow along, be sure to check out the link to the corresponding blog post in the description down below. Before we begin, be sure to download Service Studio from our website and have the Poke API pulled up to follow along. <laughs> with that out of the way, let's jump into it. So as you can see here, we have Service Studio pulled up, but we have nothing in our application. This is a reactive web application that is completely empty. Um, and the reason why I am doing this completely from scratch and starting with nothing is because I wanna show you how to actually incorporate your REST API into the visual components of your application. So let's go ahead and start building our interface first, and then we'll dive into the REST API portion. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna pull in a screen and we're just gonna go ahead and select an empty screen. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is put an input component onto our screen. This will allow us to actually type in the Pokemon's name uh, to eventually get data from the REST API. So let's find our input. Where is, there we go. And we'll just go ahead and put it right here at the top. And then we wanna add a button, which will initiate our REST API action. And we'll put that right next to the input. We're not gonna do anything fancy for the user interface. We're just gonna try to make it something that just, just to show how, I'll show off how to actually work with the Poke API. With those two elements on our user interface, now let's go ahead and add an if condition. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want elements of my user interface to be hidden when there's no data from our Poke API being uh, displayed. That just makes for a better user interface and also doesn't show any of the default values for anything. Um, you'll see kind of down the line why I've set it up like this, but I'm gonna put all of the visual like user interface components within the false portion of the if condition. So you'll see what I mean as we kind of work through it. Um, I'm gonna create a card that actually shows uh, my Pokemon's information. So let's go ahead and find card it's somewhere on there. There we go. So we'll put our card in the false section of our if statement, and then we're gonna add an actual card item and put that in there as well. Um, and now we need to start building out what information is gonna be shown uh, from the data from our Poke API. So in this case, I wanna have an image of the actual sprite. So we'll take an image and we'll drag that over and we'll put that on the left-hand side of our card. Uh, then we wanna be able to display actual like name, maybe ID and maybe ability information uh, on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So I'm gonna do this with um, labels and then also expressions. So for our first label, we'll put name and then I will put an expression next to it if it lets me. Go ahead and close our expression value for now. We'll fill out all that information once we kind of get our API configured. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the next portion, which will be another label. Oh, it's not where I want that. We'll try that again. This one will be for ID. And then we will also do another expression next to our ID. There we go. And now we wanna actually include uh, ability information. And if you wanna know where I've gotten some of these details, if you actually go to the Poke API, it has a list of all of the different things that you can pull. Specifically, I'm going to the Pokemon endpoint of the Poke API to get all of this information. But you can see all of the details for that on this screen. But let's go ahead and go back to Service Studio. So we'll change this to ability. And then we'll do, we'll add one more expression just to kind of round this out. 
And we'll go ahead and leave those as is for now. Oh, actually, we'll update the names of the expressions. That'll make life a little easier when we're trying to bind everything later on. Can I update this? Okay, it's not gonna let me do that. Okay, I'll do ID for that one. and then ability for this one. Okay. Once we have all of our user interface components done, we wanna go ahead and configure our REST API to actually start pulling some data and connecting the dots for all of these things that we've just created. So in order to configure our REST API, we need to go to the Logic tab in Service Studio. As you can see, there's several different dropdowns here. The one that we're most interested in is the integrations dropdown, where there is an actual REST selection that's there and we want to go ahead and right click on our, our rest selection you'll be you'll get a few options here too the one that we're most interested in is consume rest api so we'll click on consume rest api you'll notice that we get two different methods here or two different options uh, add single method or add multiple methods uh, for this particular use case, I'm only connecting to one endpoint in the API. So adding a single method is the way that we want to go. Now, if you have uh, an actual API with multiple different endpoints, you might want to select add multiple methods to make this a lot easier of a process for you and you don't have to do this multiple times. This just makes life a little bit easier. And for now, we're going to choose um, add a single method. So we'll go ahead and continue. And as you can see, our pop-up has now changed. So we have a consume single API pop-up. It shows uh, our default method and a blank URL input screen. So we need to get our URL from our REST API endpoint. So we're gonna go back to the documentation. And as you can see, I'm at the Poke API's documentation. We wanna hit the Pokemon endpoint and we wanna make sure that we copy our URL that is in the documentation. We're gonna go back to Service Studio. And then we're gonna actually paste our URL into the method URL. It is a get request, so we're already set there. We don't have to do any configuration. And then I'm gonna change our actual query parameter variable here, and I'm just gonna change it to name. But because this actually accepts an ID or a name, uh, you can actually just send numerical data to it if you want to down the line. I'm just calling it name to make life a little bit easier for us during this tutorial. But with that all set up, we wanna actually communicate with our API and make sure that it works. So we wanna test it out. So we're gonna to go to the test tab. And as you can see in the URL parameter values, our query param that we set up over here is showing up as an actual value over here. So let's go ahead and put in a test name to see if we can actually get data and we're gonna test it. So this is gonna reach out to our API to make sure that everything is functioning correctly. And as, as you can see, we get a 200. So that means that we're good to go. Everything's communicating the way that it's supposed to. And then we want to take that response and we, and we wanna copy the response body. So before I continue, there's kind of two important things that are happening here, right? It is establishing um, our actual URL query parameter and auto configuring it so that we can pass it later on uh, when we're actually trying to do our API calls. And then by copying the response body, it's actually creating kind of the, uh, it's auto configuring our, struct our data structure so that we don't have to configure it ourselves down the line. Uh, you can do this manually, but for us and all intents and purposes, if our API is set up correctly, it's a lot easier to do it this way than to try to like configure it yourself, if that makes sense. So be sure to save yourself the headache. Just do it with the auto configuration. It'll save you a lot of time and energy down the line. But with that set up, you can see that we got our response and our response body is good. So we can go ahead and finish it. Now, as you can see underneath our rest drop down here, we have the Poke API, and we also have our one API method that we're trying to reach out to, the get Pokemon endpoint. With that configured, now we can start actually connecting our user interface to our REST API, because even though it's configured, it's not doing anything yet, and we want it to do something. So let's make it do something. We're gonna go back to our interface, and now we need to start connecting all of the dots. So on, under our screen, we need to actually add two different variables, two local variables. So you right click on the screen and you'll see several different options. And the first thing we're gonna do is add local variable. 
So the first local variable we're gonna create is search bar because we got to take our input from our search bar and actually place it somewhere in order to make the call later down the line. And also we're gonna just keep it a regular text data type. Uh, if we're doing something different down the line, we probably wanna change that up. But for all intents and purposes, this is gonna work for our use case here. And then we wanna add another local variable. And this is actually gonna be our most important one because this is actually gonna get our get Pokemon response data structure uh, into our application. So we'll see that, you'll see that there's, uh, for data type, we're gonna change this. We are gonna change this to, oh, if I can actually type, we're gonna change it to get Pokemon response, and this is a data structure. There it is. Now, you're also gonna get errors here, and throughout this process, you will get several errors. Don't worry, we're gonna be connecting all the dots for everything. But in this case, these two errors we're getting is because we're not using them yet. So for our first one, our search bar variable, let's actually connect our input to the search bar variable. So if we click on our input, you'll see under variable that this is red. We'll just change this to search bar. And look, it's already popping up as a suggestion. So we'll go ahead and click search bar. And as you can see, that clears that error and there's no more error on our input. And now we need to actually use our Pokemon variable or data structure and start connecting those dots. So in our expression, we want the value for this. We're gonna change this to, since this is the name field, I wanna show the Pokemon's name. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of suggestions and Pokemon.name, we'll click that. That binds now Pokemon.name to our expression. We're gonna do this two more times. This one's an ID. So the value for this is going to be Pokemon dots. It's not showing up as a suggestion. I believe it's ID. There it is, it recognized it right off the bat. And now our ability. Okay, here it is. So it's Pokemon dot abilities dot current dot ability dot name. Oop, as I ruined that, there it is. Okay, <laughs> I had to look that one up because I couldn't remember the exact way to commute to get that one section of the endpoint, but check the documentation. That's, that's what we're looking for. And now probably the most important part is that we need to define the conditions of our if statement. Because if we don't define this, essentially it's always gonna just show as empty and we don't want it to always show as empty. But because we now actually have the uh, Pokemon objects, we can uh, now base our uh, like show and hide off of like the data that's on that variable. So the condition in this case is going to be Pokemon.name. And I'm gonna do it as if it's just like an empty name. Because in this case, if we don't have anything in that object, then it's not gonna show. But if we do have something that's in the object, then it's like going to show. So let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, oh, actually we have one other thing that we have to do, right? Like we've now put, we've now bound our user interface components to the actual variables but we haven't actually tried to make the call to our API yet. So let's go ahead and do that. That is probably one of the most important things. We need to bind the button. So as you can see in the button, we have uh, this error and it's going on the onClick event. So we need to actually set up an onClick event. We are gonna click on the dropdown, go to new client action. And as you can see, you get this client action uh, workflow and we need to define what this workflow is gonna do. So we wanna to communicate to the Poke API. So we're gonna go back to our logic tab. We're gonna take our get Pokemon endpoint under the REST API, and we're gonna drag it in. There it is. So as you can see, we're getting an error here, and it's, it's trying to tell us that we haven't defined what variable is gonna be passed to our API. In this case, it's gonna be our previous variable that we set up search bar. And now that clears the error. Once we drag our get Pokemon response to our workflow, now we need to actually take the response and bind it to our variable. So we're gonna go to uh, assign here. We're gonna drag assign just underneath our get Pokemon action. And then we're gonna bind it to the variable Pokemon. 
luckily it already shows up as a suggestion, so we could just click it. And then the value is gonna be get Pokemon.response. And as you can see, that is already configured as a suggestion. So we don't even have to type it. <laughs> so with that done, let's go ahead and go back to our interface because we are getting one more error. And I think I know what the error is. Yes, we need to actually bind our image to our sprite. So this is gonna be super easy. Um, it is going to be an external URL. So we're gonna configure that because the API responds with an external URL as where the actual image location is. So that's what we're gonna do. And it's gonna be Pokemon dot, I actually think it's already here. Yep, so we have a whole bunch of different sprite data that we can use. In this case, I'm gonna use sprites dot front dot or underscore default. There we go. So now it looks like we've cleared our all of our errors. So let's go ahead and publish and test our application. There we go. And once it's published, we can open up our application in our browser. All right, and here is our application. Let's go ahead and do a quick search to test it out. There we go. It's pulling in our sprite. It's pulling in the name of our Pokemon, the ID and its ability. We'll test one more just to be sure. We'll do a... Uh... There we go, and it works. <laughs> and that is how you connect a third-party REST API to your OutSystems application. Of course, if you like what you see in this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. We're gonna have a lot more content like this in the future, and we hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, see you around.